this year I'm starting my NXN documentary in the evergreen state inside of a home. And in my house, we go to NXN every year and we've gone so many times and we collect the NXN bells as ornaments for our Christmas tree. And in a previous documentary, I had my son Peyton with me who competed at NXN multiple times as a, in, as a, on a team for Kamaiakin, who is from the Tri-Cities here in Washington State. And we're going to do some experiments with his little sister today, um, my daughter, Eva. And so you'll see her in part of this documentary. We're going to do some experiments together. So we're intentionally in the wrong golf course. This is the golf course where the Washington State Championships happens because we're going to do a little science experiment. So if you hold the ball up above your head and then drop it, want to see how, how high the ball goes. Okay, do it, do it a few times so we can see how high it goes. Go probably just a little bit past your waist. Okay, do it a few more times. Okay, and then let's go and do it on the grass over here. And I'm gonna grab tape measure and one of the flags that we had for one of our other documentaries. So this is the golf course grass. It isn't solid. Okay, so go ahead and do the drop test here. So actually that's pretty high, right? I'm gonna get a different view so I can see where it goes. Okay, do it a few more times now that I have this view. Okay. Alright, so the second test that we're gonna do is a random jump test. She's not <laughs> okay. she's not ready for this, but um, she doesn't know which direction I'm gonna have her go. Um, but actually I don't even know how I'm gonna quantify this unless I have a a relative marker showing the middle of where she is. Okay, so I'm not going to tell you beforehand which direction you're going to go and then jump. Okay, so stay there and then hold that and hold it in the. Oops. Hold on, what? This is a second. We have to undo. We're learning on the process right here. Okay, hold, hold the this part. This. No, nope. This? Yep, that part. Okay, hold it in the middle of where your legs are, in the middle of your feet. So the distance is five foot one and a half about. Okay, let's do it again. We'll do it three times. Okay, and you have to jump as fast as I say, or as fast as you can do it when I say, go that way. Okay. Okay, you're in the middle. So this is five foot two. Pretty consistent. Okay, that way. Okay, so hold it there in the middle. So this one was four foot eight and a half. Okay, so now we have data for how the ball bounces and how the random jump test works. <laughs> and so <laughs> just, just out of curiosity, step up and down and jump. I wanna hear if, if we can, see if we can hear anything. Okay, you can do it again. So it sounds solid. And when we get to Portland, the grass is gonna be completely different. In all the years that I've come here, this part has never been a lake. And when we were driving on this road that leads here to Glendevere, the rain was, <laughs> It was crazy how much we hydroplaned about a mile up the road. It was, and we hydroplaned like so many boat. times. We hydroplaned as frequently as Taylor Swift songs came on the radio. How many, how often were the Taylor Swift songs? It was like, it was like every three songs, three or four songs. Every, yeah, between three and five songs was a Taylor Swift song. It was incredible. They're setting up the, all of the vending now and we are here! It's the Nike Cross Nationals Mobile. Look. <laughs> it looks like the one from He-Man. Oh, the wheels go crazy. The other thing is, in previous years, I had wished I had one of these, but I didn't. 
And so I keep learning every year how to do this better. Every year when I come here and do the documentaries, I show the sand traps in Portland because in Portland the sand traps are pools. And this year, not just the sand traps are pools, but even the grass. There's pools everywhere. Kind of wonder if this is the national swimming championships. <laughs> I got here so early that you can still see the effects from last night's storm strewn across the race course. And before the races start, you can count on all of this stuff being cleared off, just like I showed in last year's documentary. So to continue our experiment, I found the firmest spot that I could find to give this grass the best possible chance of representing the best footing that you're ever going to find here. Okay. Okay. Do it a few times. The bounce is actually pretty good there. Okay, and then let's do the, the jumping here on the best spot that we can find. We had to walk a long ways to find this exact spot. It's probably the high spot from which all of the other stuff flows. But there's the least amount of stuff here. So, okay, so we're gonna, I'm gonna, it's gonna be more challenging because I'm holding an umbrella this time. I'm well, with the So you're gonna have to measure it, I guess. Because I have my hands full already. You put a stick where you landed? A pine cone. A pine cone? It's about four feet six inches. Four six? I don't remember exactly what it was, but that's... It was definitely like... Okay, and then let's try this again. Okay, that was a good idea. We're improvising here. We do. <laughs> Let me see if I can help you. Okay, pull tight. Four foot eleven, maybe. Okay, that's a little bit less than in Tri Cities. Okay. Did you jump as hard as you could? No, I was. I fell over. <laughs> you almost fell over? Why did you almost fall over? Just because it feels like unstable it's below like, you? It's just like. like okay. It's mud. So let's measure this last one. Four foot six. Okay, so now we're gonna go to a typical spot on the course and show how much difference it is. This vantage point, this is gonna be so spectacular on film when all of the runners go running through the mud there. This is gonna be amazing. I'm gonna give you three guesses where the low spot in this area is and the first two guesses don't count. This is going to be so cool. So from my other times being here at NXN, this is pretty typical. Eva, come over here to your left, or to my left, and then we're going to do it here. Put the flag there in the middle. I guess you can do the ball first, huh? I was expecting difference, but this is freaking incredible. Is water like, supposed to bounce a basketball? Do, do it again. <laughs> this is such a great demonstration. Okay, do it. Okay, do it. The, do it the third time. Oh, that is such a great demonstration. Okay, now let's do the jump test. So, hopefully, you like your pants the way they are before they get mud on them. Yep. 
This is what we do for our enthusiasm of cross country. Show you what it's like to be here in ways that no other thing can do. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, that your was. Feet get, like stuck right there. <laughs> your foot, your feet got stuck. Okay. Yeah. So. Like right here. Okay, I'll stand on it. What was it? Four foot six. That's almost the same as last time. I got like stuck in foot. You you delayed a lot before you jumped. Was it because your feet were stuck? No, like I couldn't see what you were doing. Oh, you couldn't tell. Okay. You slipped. Okay. Right here. Okay. So I will stand right there, and we'll figure out a system with this. Okay, oops. There we go. Almost, oh, four foot. Exactly. Four feet, so. Good luck, guys. It, it reduces your, how much you can be propelled by at least six inches. Yeah, your feet are definitely getting stuck in that puddle over there. They're so, really okay. So we need to do one more, right? One more. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So right here is the mark. Your hand is completely soaked. But my back and you saved yourself from falling, which shows your athleticism. I know, I'm crazy. Okay, so what was that one? It's less than four feet. Three foot ten. So, what is your conclusion from experiencing the difference between both of these places? <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Portland is strange, man. Like it was raining so ridiculously hard, we could barely stay on the road on the freeway. We hydroplaned, like I, we were saying, just about as often as the Taylor Swift song came on. But and just like that, the rain has stopped. With the temperature being perfect, like it is for running today, it's going to be possibly a very beautiful and scenic for photos and video day for cross country. This is gonna be really exciting. I spoke too soon, because as soon as I said something, now it's raining again. Welcome to Portland, everybody. It's NXN. I'm hoping that this is true. More cowbells, athletic.net. This is the first bus that's arrived today. Normally it's people coming to watch, but I think we just happened to be here at the right time when some of the runners got dropped off. Portland, we almost never see that. Blue sky, yeah. No. That was a horrible Australian accent. <laughs> Sorry about that people paint the rocks on this trail to highlight where possible tripping hazards are. I am some kind of wuss. This guy is walking this trails with these big old weights. Oh, you got a ladder on your back. Oh, I have a ladder and an umbrella, but man, I am not that tough. Feels like it's turning into the crocodile hunter, but I found a tree with rabies, so Thought I'd the capture that. Nike Cross Nationals here at Glendamere Golf Course. See, they must be cross country runners because look at their teamwork. Now he's bearing the weight on the way back while carrying a baby. This is incredible. Portland is built different. 
every year I try to show something that I haven't shown before. So I saw this sitting open. Talked to the gentleman who was hired to bring his equipment, and he said that these are 15 to 30 watts is all is required. And because of the cone, he said that they're very efficient and can put out a lot of sound. So then, over there is the typical banner, and this year, do you call that? Uh, I thought it was digital camo at first, but. When I get closer, it doesn't quite look like it, but it makes it hard to see the white on that background. So just down there is where the one mile mark is, and this is a spot that I typically film in each year, and we've never had that much water there. So it'd be interesting to compare how it is now, and when the race is going, see how much of that water they can get out of there, but you'll see it later on the video. So he was saying that he thinks that they can get all of the water off before race time. He said the mud will still be there, but these are kind of a rolling squeegee that they use on tennis courts. And I, <laughs> they've been working hard, he said, as soon as the sun came up. Rich Gonzalez, what he thought, he said, how does it look, coach? And then he shook his hand, <laughs> like so-so, and then he said, which means good. He does such a good job for cross country. It's race day, 2023 Nike Cross Nationals here at Linear Golf Course. Right now there is no rain, but since the 3 a.m., four and a half hours of rain, they came down pretty hard. And the course now is very different than it was yesterday when the Athens did their run through. Footing will definitely be an issue, especially for the second race of the day, the Girls National Championship. This is one of the spots that in 2019 we saw kids going down, coming off this short turn, taking a spill in this area. There are, very, there are several points on the backstretch, on the lollipop, where footing will also be an issue. We discussed a little bit about the terraces, the deciding factor at the finish of the race, but throughout, this course right now is definitely saturated. You're going to start seeing the surface give way, and again, it's going to be bad enough for the first race, but the second race, that's when this thing is going to be really, really sloppy. I bought a 
championship. Just every year you see standing water here and people will go off to the side to try to avoid it on this final straight. And I'm going to go down there and show you the hill that they need to go over right before this a little bit of stretch to the finish. Space shuttle. <laughs> this is the hill on the finished straight. Just wanted to show you what it looks like, how much elevation change there actually is. I'd say probably about three quarters of that tree right there in height. This is the little terraces. smarter than I was I was telling her that we were gonna slide down the hill and she carefully walked over to the paved path uh, how bad. is it not too bad okay good it's bad up there but you know what they got 300 meters of that stuff just run through the water yep go around it. so it's about the height of a man each of these terraces This one, this one's quite a bit taller than one person. It looks, it's gonna be so beautiful today. Now that we got the rain out of the system, hopefully, and the blue sky, it's gonna be some spectacular photography and video today with all the mud flying around and perfect weather. It's gonna do a little slow pan shot. Hopefully slow enough that it doesn't make anyone sick. Since it's difficult to see the elevation change here at Glendevere, I'm standing at the low spot and trying to show off in the distance how the terrain is and changes from this vantage point. And then going back there to the finish, going back up the hills that I just showed, that's what it looks like from this perspective looks a bit steeper from this direction. It's so peaceful and calm and beautiful. The blue sky coming out and the clouds heading off. It's gonna end up being a very beautiful day.
Yeah, yeah. 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 say, build a new little guest house, new house. I could totally use backup with the cookie. We ran the course yesterday. We actually came all the We all looked at the practice one. God. So bad. This morning when I pulled in in the dark, I pulled into my usual spot and I think I went a little bit too far and instead of backing up, I normally have that spot. But right in front of me parked Pearl Parker and so I got to talking with her and I was asking her, she, they're from Dana Hills and they have these hats and I, I noticed, it stood out to me why everybody from Dana Hills has striped stuff on and so I was asking Pearl what is this all about and so she's going to tell us a little bit about how that came to be. They refer to it as the Waldo, where's Waldo, they have the polos and they when, they, when they're wearing them, they call. What did you wear? Are you wearing your wears, Waldo? Uh, they're mascots, the dolphins, and they refer to as Go Dana. Dana Hills is the high school located in Dana Point, California. This is Marlo Harris, my granddaughter, and she also ran. They came in fourth for state. Her brother, my grandson Logan Harris, is running with Dana Hills, and Amy. Is mom. Hi, Amy. I'm Amy's mom, and Auntie is Catherine. Hello, Catherine. And so we are here to support the, the dolphins. All right, go dolphins. <laughs> I'll tell you what. I was so grateful for this. Almost the whole trip, I needed to use it, and no more details are needed. But I was very grateful that it was there. And surprisingly, I don't remember having the, I guess they're selling donuts. I don't remember this being here or that in previous years. And all this talk about the bells, we're looking all over for the bells and we cannot find one. So if anyone at Nike is listening, bring back the bells.
So those fabulous performances in Idaho set the time. Here are the main entrance. Check in for the Nike Cross Nationals community race will be at the black Nike tent north of the finish as you make your way to the start line area. The blue sky that we temporarily had has been replaced with more clouds. It's like we're in Portland or something. In ship, Bear Branch Park. Mariola's going to get to the line, is going to be the Nike Cross Regional South Champion. South part of the United States was the theme on weekend number two of Nike Cross regional coverage in 2023. We saw those highlights from the South region in Texas. Then on to Arizona. Lady had a bell. She's from New Jersey. And I was telling her that they don't have any bells to offer this year. So I was, when I heard the bell, I had to ask her to see where she got it. This is how they did. How much of the water they got off of there. Start is there and they head that way, but after they come back and then they they go I'll go fast, but they go this way and then they go down this hill over there and then around the loop and then they come back through here. But when they come back through here, if it's really packed, they're gonna have to try to avoid all of this. So they're gonna go to one side or the other and they're probably going to go to the inside which means that inside is just going to get shredded. Things considering, I don't think the course condition is too bad in most places because it's been dry for a good part of the week before this last couple days. It hasn't really damaged a lot of where the, the main runners go on the course. Although I think that could quickly change after the boys race. So the boys are going to have the good footing and then the girls are going to have the hard time. But sorry for making these guys wait. Yeah, so we are Seattle Prep Cross Country. We have most of the varsity squad here. Um, we're out here supporting Jack Henske. He's an individual. Um, he got third at uh, Northwest NXR. Um, and we, I think as a team, we got fifth, right? Yeah, we got fifth. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, we're just we're so excited to come out here support our boy. It was like we woke up at um, like most of us woke up at like 4:45, um, drove down from Seattle. Uh, so yeah, we're super excited to be out here today. How were the roads for you guys? Uh, it was a bit rough. They were all asleep when I was driving. Um, Any well, hydroplaning? It wasn't that. It wasn't that bad. Oh, that was sketchy for me. I came from Kennewick. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, there was there was trucks that were like big semis off on the side of the road. They went through guardrails. And there was a whole bunch of cars parked along the side of the road. Oh, wow. And 
hydroplane probably like every few minutes. Wow. wow. And in yeah, some places that, every few seconds. That's like, definitely a lot worse. Yeah, it was pretty worse. bad. Yeah. So good luck to you guys. Yeah, and nice your, you. See uh, you. Yeah. So you have to go into the yeah, no, carpet. And it's so important as he was practicing his panning shot, getting all of his settings right. As we look forward to the day, obviously weather conditions going to play some, uh, some bearing on that. We heard from Rich Gonzalez about the, uh, the rain that came through. We all kind of heard it overnight. Um, getting a little bit drier from the sky point of view, but the, uh, the damage is done on the course. What do you expect that to affect? There's the final moments of reflection here at Glendiver Golf Course in Portland as we're getting set to introduce all of the teams that advance from all of the regionals at large bids teams as well. Cross country fans, time to count down to the start of the championship boys race with the introduction of our qualifying team and individuals for the 2023 Nike Cross National. We will start first with the team from the Northwest region. Our first team, they are right here in the Portland city of Oakland City. They are first up, 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 they
program is a national blue blood in the sport. This year, once again, the Minnesota Class 3A champions making a Heartland record 11th appearance at NXN, led by junior William Weber. This is YZ. Junior Ethan Holt and sophomore Cooper Erickson earning the spot to Nationals for the third time. This is Stevens Point. We have a lot of the East region. This next one is the Group 4 champions in the New Jersey I saw some guys warming up on the trails that are paved. It seemed like a really good idea. And they have their trainers on before they put on their spikes. Our squad is from the state of Florida, where they dominated in-state competition all season long, then blew the doors off the competition in winning the Southeast Regional by 127 points just it's pretty two smart days of them. after winning the... So I talked with one of the officials and she said the independents are right here in these first two lanes. Okay, the so ones from California? Uh, I think it's just the, the, the kids that qualify individually as opposed to with the team. I think they spread them out in boxes all along, depending on what area they're from. Yeah, I don't know what from. Yeah, it happens really fast. First call, there's almost no wind, very lightly sprinkling, it's been raining for a couple days. Prior to that there was no rain for a bit. So the, the course is in decent condition for Portland, not nearly as bad as I've seen it in the past and not nearly as bad as it could be. The weather is absolutely perfect. So the big pools of water can be an issue today, as well as the parts that get really run down, like on around the hairpins, where there's not much room to go. That's going to be pretty adventurous.
I normally don't film while I'm walking, so hopefully it's not too jarring. This part of the great migration is everybody moves from the announcing area where they announce all the teams and then they start to make a line and it will be several people thick all along the whole way. But people getting in position to watch People who've worked really hard. The 44 best cross country teams in America are represented here, as well as some of the fastest individuals. We have a lot to thank Nike for promoting distance running in America, and I believe it's starting to bear fruits as you see some of the people who've benefited from the programs in the past starting to excel in collegiate and in pro. I'm gonna to head to a spot that should be pretty dramatic. Eva mentioned something profound. She said it's interesting that everyone, almost everyone else is going the opposite way and we're going completely the opposite direction as them. This is cool. They went and got a pump truck to pump the water out of the spot that was gonna be super dramatic and I hope it still is, but they pumped all of that water in there. So cool to see all the people that you run into I, here. I attract, uh... Where they're trying to drain the water. <laughs> I left my autograph here. I almost went down. I totally saved it the last second. And I'm very glad, but they're pumping all of this out. Have multiple of them working hard on it. the best spot. Well, I'm a volunteer and I'm supposed to keep people from crossing. I'm like, ain't no one going to be crossing. Yeah, that's my <laughs> spot. They're supposed to... How many people are volunteering to... today? I don't know, a lot. <laughs> Thank you. Oh Trying to offer a unique perspective each time. They just started. Or I guess they just started now. There is such a huge delay. From here you can't even tell what the heck. That's disappointing.
but you can kind of see where the bulk of people are running. Like, oh, but. I'm gonna film the people. Yep. Hi, Tanner. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Good. Fix that. Ah. Tanner Anderson was an NXN champion. No, leave it there, right there. Leave it Henry, there. Henry, look like that. Shut up. What's up, man? <laughs> How are you? Good. I was just torn my ACL. Eva, I might need your help to spot me. What's up? Such a different experience than I've ever had here before. Seeing all of this from this perspective. See the truck or the car is ready to pick them up because they can't go through the place where they normally go through because it's flooded. So you can see up in the distance. It's interesting from here, it's really hard to tell where all of the runners are, but from where the people and where all the excitement is, you can kind of feel it coming towards you. There it is, right there. There they are. I'm so excited for what's about to happen right here. Look at how hesitant they are. here as we work our way from kilometer two to kilometer three and also moving up Jojo Jordan into seventh and Josiah Tostenson who had that awful race at NXR in 10th Adam Burleson the 403 miler in 14th by the way Paul these three California kids they all raced against each other in the same division last week off by just a half a second in that race so he's going to be hungry to move up as well Pretty exciting, uh, although I don't expect the California start. kids to hang on. Also seeing that real-time updating of the team score in the upper left corner of your screen. Carroll with the lead after two kilometers. Again, five runners scored by virtue of their placings. Have that lead of 71 points over Harriman, which has moved up in the standings. Lincroft, Miami, Havana, and Downers North now constitute the top five. So four of the top five teams in the country are in the top four. American Forks starting to make their way up now. They moved up eight spots in that last K. They're now in eighth, but still, I would have to say they're in trouble. And where is Danny Simmons? 
He's That's doing what he point. should do. He's running Danny smart. Simmons back in 71st position after 2K, coming through 10 seconds off the lead now. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to know. Maybe he slipped. Maybe he just didn't get out quite as fast as he would like. I mean, 10 seconds. That's not that much. It does not sound too far back to make up over the next two and a half K. It's just, is it, how hard is it to navigate through, you know, 70 bodies? And you're also delayed reacting to moves, as we can see now, you know, it's starting to stretch out a little more. We um, can't tell exactly who's pushing, but, you know, as they come back through the start line, they're, they're starting to spread things out a little. So many of my plans that I had for filming this have gone out the window, but I'm just, here, Looks like enjoying the experience. Tom, that would be Jojo and Jordan. Not a surprise. He it's wasn't weird the being the here and having had, no idea what's going on with very, the race because I'm trying to have a different experience this time and show something Utah different. I'm trying to be in that Bob position Herman, for that big pool. Many of the that I knew that that, 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 that was going to be a big deal today. So that was one of my focuses that I had to be there for. So this is no fluke that he's out there in front and maybe he's been peaking for this race. He's got the experience. Richard Young out of California up alongside him as well Nine as you can see now. from our drone high above. You can also see the course tracker where they're out on that course coming up on the second mile complete of a little over three miles of racing. Again, 5,000 meters for the distance for both the boys and the girls. And now you start to see the 3K splits come through. Yeah, Paul, and, and it's, a, it's a slow race. Uh, one thing we better take note of, Aiden Van de Kuala, who's in that, kind of that second pack, he's the kid that runs 49 for 400 meters. And right now he's in sixth. He is the fourth leading returnee from last year. I'll be curious if he starts to move up. He went up 53 spots in that last kilometer. So keep an eye on him. But it's still California, 1-2, uh, Pada and Bell, and then Sam Scott, Dylan Nolly, who's a legit runner himself. But Bandaquala there in six, you have to keep an eye out for him for sure. But you know what? This leaderboard is not kind of what we expected outside, really, of Bandaquala and JoJo Jordan. Yeah, note on our real-time results, and that's one of the challenges with all these runners coming across the timing mats. It did say Para in the lead, but that is Jordan, bib number 200 in that clear southwest vest that is in the lead. So we'll use that as our... Uh, our official leaderboard here, which is the live pictures coming from the course, but things starting to get interesting here as they move into the back half of the race. Paul, oh, Manny Poots is moving up. That's Manny Poots in second, who had that thrilling finish falling just on the other side. The kid from Wisconsin, he's got a lot of moxie, and he's hanging right up there in second behind Jordan. Landon Hemeyer, the tall figure, mid 182, also up in the mix as well. Second at the Idaho Championships, trying to get a go of it now into that, what, top four, top five. Sean, back half of the race now, what are you thinking as you see this race unfold? Well, if you're in the lead, you definitely have some adrenaline right now. And maybe, you know, you didn't expect to be here, but if you're feeling good and you're pushing from the front, that can always um, give you a lot of confidence. And you can see that the course is a little more torn up as they run through some of the sections for the second time. So, you know, you, now you know how to navigate. And, you know, benefit of being up front is you can take the tangents, you can hug the curves. I mean, he's starting to get a little bit of a gap. And if no one wants to respond, and you can take advantage of these hills and tighter turns, I think, you know, you can find fractions of a second. But you're really just gonna wanna be careful around these turns not to fall. Yeah, Jojo Jordan does have some separation, Sean. I fully agree, you can see slipping there, coming around that turn. Some are even using the, uh, the uh, whatever you, the barriers there to kind of keep their uh, position. But that's what happens that's on smart. these hairpin turns when it's that slick. You almost like need that as a ground make that turn. These types of conditions for this, for Jojo Jordan, this is nothing. And look at how he goes through that on, water. Man. It doesn't portion of the course that brings them back and around and they already see that finish line and still got a ways to go there's the real
real time split. Well, somebody fell down in front of me and up to two just off camera. Look at that talent behind him, chasing him down. And Byron Glavius yes. is out there looking. 3.3 3 seconds back. And he was Let's one of the Let's go, Kyle! Back Come on, Kyle, go hunt it! Go hunt it! He does. And by the way, Danny Simmons has moved up quite a bit. He's now in 21st. So that's going to help American Forks cause. Uh, but now we're going to see just what the heart of these young athletes. This is what you're talking about. We saw the NCAAs with Caitlin Tui. It is not the individual day he was hoping for. It was not the individual day Caitlin Tui was hoping for. But how can you battle for your team? They're in second now, but if he can keep moving up, he gives them a chance to compete for that win. Closing stretches now of the 2023 Nike Cross Nationals Championship. JoJo Jordan having moved out ahead of such a talented and deep field of national class high school runners now closing in on that fateful hill that we've seen test all of the runners over so many years here in Glendamere Golf Course. Can he get Look over the top go. of it and still hold off the chasers behind? Paul, just about a minute to go in this race. He doesn't have to hang on for much longer, but this is where you are testing. Oh man, the guy's this point the just course. behind because him. At this point, the course, his speed is going to take him through. He looks good powering up his last hill. I mean, it's always, oh, it's, it's brutal to take your momentum. But if he can find it again, one look back, but the gap looks, ooh, it's closing. Not only do you have to crest that first hill, but you got to get over the second one. Now we see it straight on. JoJo Jordan keeps looking behind him as he's getting Cameron Todd's best effort here in the closing stretches. Everybody else trying to get to the finish line, but it would appear that JoJo Jordan with one final look, the smile emerges, the celebration begins. He is the Nike Cross Nationals champion. Oh, what a finish by Nathan Neal. He came from nowhere, moved up nine spots. He was one of our top three returnees. And Cameron Todd, another brilliant finish. Good Nathan job, Simmons Nathan. Coming in as well. And already carnage. It must have been hard out there today because the times were way slower than they were capable of. It was down to the course conditions. parentheses upstairs on that graph that shows you how many runners from the respective teams have got across the finish line. Your first five are your scores. This is also real-time scoring. So once that first five is across the line, that may not be the final result here. So a lot can happen right now in that battle, which looks like it's going to be a redo of that Utah State Championship. Look at Aaron on American Fork go back and forth on that board in real time. Yeah, and it helps. Aaron, of course, lost twice to American Fork. So they have a bullseye on American Fork today. Aaron has that great group of runners. Andy Simmons helped the cause of American Fork by kicking off eight runners in that last kilo. It'll be very interesting to see when the uh, dust settles how this is all going to play out. And, and even if they don't come out with the win, I'm very impressed that American Fork was able to move up from 16th all the way to potentially second. And when we saw that first kilometer split, I didn't know. I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed because they had to navigate a lot of runners. A very, you know, we saw the how. Runners were slipping and sliding everywhere. There's a sloppy course, and, and that shows a lot of composure. And I know they might not have accomplished their biggest goal, but hopefully they can still be proud of how they ran because that was very impressive. And we got a lot of talent that's been here before at the top of that list, but I also know Tom again, unofficial scores right now. Two first time appearances by Miami, Havana, and Niwot, and for the moment they're in the top five. Yeah, and Paul, well, I think this is pretty solidified. The 188 runners have now crossed the finish line. We can call this for Harriman. Congratulations to them, the first Utah champions. Lost twice to American Fork this year, packed them in, and did a great job. And they were the best team from last year to come back for another go, so that oh, idea, just that, that experience, and that motivation was going to help push them forward, and now it appears that they will be crowned Nike Cross Nationals champions here with 83 points, still unofficial. American Fork second with 100 points, Carroll, and then Miami and Havana. Nywat in fifth and rounding out the top ten on the team side. Lindcroft out of the Northeast, down to North, the Midwest, San Clemente of California, Riverton of the Southwest, and Dana Point of California. 
I'm just going to press the button. And I made it, and I didn't look back. Yeah, you did a great job. And uh, was there, there ever a point where you knew you had it in the back, or just all the way to the finish line? There were guys charging behind you, but you held them off strong. Uh, any fear out there? Any glances back? Or you were just tunnel vision? I did a final stretch, and I, I knew I had it. Did a put up, and we came through a lot. Yeah, man, that's the way to do it. You know, no better feeling than you know stepping across that line in the first place. Uh, really proud of the way you raced. That was a strong, confident run. So congratulations. Uh, I think Had to have been hard for Daniel to have a huge target on his back all year. And the way it turned out today. Congratulations, American Fork. State of Utah, that's where cross country was at this year for the boys. Very impressive. Somewhat of a celebrity among cross country and I didn't hear that. Every year brings something different to the table here. Wonder what that feels like. Must feel pretty good. He was committed to his okay, craft. Okay, we are now set for the All Arms. First, we'll do our individuals. We're going to bring up to the stage our top three individuals, Nathan Young, Cameron Todd, and Jojo Jordan. So first off, our first place finisher out of the state of Montana, in the Northwest region, 
know you like tough conditions. And what the trip is into Neil out of Montana. What were your thoughts on the race today?
Uh, uh, once once again, again, third place team out of Texas is Our top two teams are from the state of Utah. They've been battling back and forth, not just this year, but the last two years. We figured these two would be on top, and sure enough, they did. We got first and second place, American Ford. American Ford with 100 points, 17 points away from the title. Sister, this is Coach Cuba. Gregory Thorpe has the top overall individual team score as Daniel Simmons, top individual score for any team, finishing 13th overall. What's up, Daniel? Here with Coach Tino Wasker. Coach Tino, first off, your thoughts on the torch today? I've never asked the boys, you know, everybody's in the same conditions. I'm just grateful for the opportunity to coach them this last 16 years. Every, Every team here, I'm sure, has been through adversity like we have been. Super grateful to be here for all that I can just trust. I'm grateful for the opportunity to represent our city, our school, our state, and the Southwest. The last couple of years, Paramount has come on the scene nationally. You have proved it strong for many years. How much does that help to have one more team pushing you year round? Uh, the competition is so wide for the nation. Uh, you don't have to just look at the local leagues, get a great competition, but it, it, it certainly keeps us on our toes to try to do the best I can to get a coach, get a good training, and excel at the highest level. Okay, once again, our second place team, one American Ford! Nice job, Nancy! Nice job, guys! Nice job, guys! Nice job, guys! Uh, I mean, obviously we're selling the most of our city, but it's not like a 
Second, but it bodes well for the strength of what Utah can bring in future years. Absolutely, and, and what I really liked um, was Danny Simmons offering congratulations to Harriman, and that shows the sportsmanship, the camaraderie, and the esprit de corps. You know, even though you lost, your team still finished second in the country. That's not too bad. And to congratulate the winners, those big rivals, I thought that was a really uh, nice moment that we had. Yeah, a sigh of relief for all those athletes as they finish up their championship run to uh, NXN in 2023. But we're just halfway home as we're going to get set for this girls race that will unfold on uh, a golf course track that is uh, a little less... I don't know, it's just going to be really interesting to watch how this uh, course turns into a little bit more of a sloppy mess for that girls championship race. That'll come up at, again, 11.35 local time as we'll get set for racing here at Glendebeer Golf Course in Portland. But a lot of excitement there from the boys' side. Congratulations to all of those winners in Nike Cross Nationals 2023 on the individual side and congratulations to Harriman out of Utah winning the first ever Nike Cross Nationals team title for a squad out of the state of Utah. Those puddles remain as the girls will take to the course coming up here shortly. Stick around, we'll be back on the other side of the break with girls championship racing here at Nike Cross Nationals. You a dog. Ah, good. Oh, hey, Jared, give me that. Sitting up for Rose Space Plus subscription. This may be way over the top. I wouldn't pay for that. I don't like to support stuff. Woo, stinky. Hey, you always throw away your socks. That's your Plus subscription right there. Seriously? So proud of you. Happy for your boys. I love you too. Congratulations, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> so, how does it feel? It feels amazing. I mean, you, you hope and pray that you can get your kids to the top of the podium at NXN, and these guys found a way. So, super proud of them. That's amazing. So, he, he was saying something right right before I started recording. What did your What did your runners say? When I went over, one of the first things they said is, "Eric Hill knows what he's talking about. He knew the math. He's right. We're the national champion." <laughs> oh, man. I, I get your team signatures yeah. on my predictions that had almost exactly the same yeah. score. Yes, I know. It's amazing. And you know what? We did it without our number one. He was sick and he just wasn't able to, to get in the top five. So we did that with the guys that were our two through six. We won the national That is so wonderful. So I'm super proud of these guys. All three of our juniors got Studios dialed and they said one thing. They said, we we're going to send these seniors out as national champions. And they ran great. Your coaching is incredible. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. They're just finally revived, so it seems. But after 4,800 meters and an all-out effort, these individuals are hurting, and when they think it's all done, 
One last climb. This is the decider right here at the top of the second terrace, exactly 200 meters to the finish. All out, everything on the line, and one goal to finish on empty. I love how Rich calls Man, these terraces. I am, That's the place I would go and have a brunch. I can almost hardly stand yeah, here. I am so grateful be, uh, right now where, uh, for what yeah, just happened. I really think I'm the only person that had an inside view of what was about to happen at the national championships. Um, I am very grateful for for the fruits of labor and how that tank can get exhausted. How hard work and determination oh, yeah, with enough time pays off. Are they I have the signatures from all of like the varsity said, runners for Harry. You really I don't have, don't have Doug Soul's signature yet, but I'm going to get it. And, and really in private conversations I had with them just after the race, him, they said that the fact that I believed in them helped them, helped propel them even more to do something that very few people believed that they could do. And the fact that the actual team score that I predicted was only off by one point, that, like, that so much validation right now that I'm and onto something with the cross country saber metrics. I'm very moment, grateful you know, right now, and I don't mean this to be boasting, but I'm like just blown away how happy this has made me. In the 2020, on the two time defending Colorado 5A state champions at the dominant performance last month, making the second consecutive appearance at NXN. Placed seven here last year, and returned five runners from that squad, including the top overall returning in the field. Oh, they've been working hard there.
It's so nice out here right now. There they are. Temperature feels so good. trees right here. You see them. the blue jacket. There they are. There's Courtney. There's Still don't really talk to Sam yet. Oh, there's Jimmy. Right there. I think the same guy's been doing it for several of them that I remember. And still the flag is just calm. The overcast today makes the colors kind of more muted than they were last year when everything just popped, but I'm excited for this race. So many great athletes here. It was pretty close. The, the second place guy was maybe two or three seconds. Was maybe 10 meters, 10, 10, 15 meters. So yeah, it was, it was pretty close. The lead pack was pretty tight the whole race. They were all right on each other's heels. So you can see them and you can So So here's what, what we did. So you see them start. Then you'll see, then they go around and there's the one mile right here. And it was so prominent. I'm like, for me, it makes me happy how all of these girls represent healthy athleticism. And for my daughter, who likes the sport of cross country and who tries to do it as well, it's neat that she can come here and aspire to do something good that a lot of these people here are doing. The girls are right. It feels like the activity level around here has just kicked up quite a notch right now. It must be getting close enough that everybody is coming over and starting to get their warm-ups off. Man, it's beautiful right now, temperature-wise. Oh, it scared the crap out of me. Oh, I like that. They're not lined up. 
Feeling myself in my bed. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what, yeah, we were gonna. I had to adjust my umbrella. Ray, don't mess up your starting block. Feels like we're just about ready to get started. It's nice enough out here that they can take off their warm ups and don't get cooled down too much. You know, feeling you have before you start racing? Oh, I got that. That's that's five minutes. to the line. Let's go, Maya! Get up, Maya! Get up, Maya! Running nice. Oh, <laughs> 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 you can tell me that's kind of an angry little drum. <laughs> <laughs
Purple uniform. Yeah, NXR, 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 NXR. But they won the power march first day. Eric got me on the bottom. Nice game, Louisville. Good night, Watt. You guys are on, yeah, you guys are now too, right? No, yeah, yeah, you're in Miami. Miami. Right? Yeah, we're in Miami. You guys can fit. Oh, so right? yeah. 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 What'd you guys say? Yeah. 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 Go cool. Oh, cool. That'd be good. <laughs> Take it first. <laughs> you guys get fit. That'd be a good one. It's Lobo money line. Go get her! Go get her! Come on, that one! Take me up for a second. Keep an eye here closely. This is the first major turn. Someone to do the match. 
I bet that's awesome over there again. I'm not going to be able to pick them up till they get up here. Let's try to find where the gator is and the runners should be close. Wow, she is flying. Some of the other notables, Anna Callahan for the Northwest in 11th position, but the uh, the race Raymer. right now is really Leachman's to lose. Paul Raymer, our eighth grader in 14th, moved up five spots in the last kilometer, and I love my big game hunter, Bethany Mahalik, just driving through the field. Third last year, she's probably going to finish second or third again this year unless Leachman just completely falls apart but very different than the boys race the splits are getting progressively slower and slower in the boys race the splits got a little bit faster after they went out so conservatively and we now it looks like maybe have a, a lead change for the team race uh i mean niwat score it was basically such a i think actually improved NXN from two to three k but academy past. with a massive jump uh, to move up into first right now. So one thing and that's wonderful the top about four cross are all from that southwest is how much region. variety you Three can get. from Colorado, one from uh, Utah. Pretty impressive. You can see now the spreads on the lower side of the screen for Academy and Niwad as they try to keep their teams close together. All five of the scoring runners for Academy moving up in their positions in the big moves by Hook and Cooper there, moving up almost 30 positions in that Sean, is where the team race is going to be won. Oh, absolutely. It's going to come down to your third, fourth, and fifth runner. Ironically, second and third right now are leading their team. Uh, second and third place in the individual race are the first and second place teams with, um, I believe, Addy and I'm not sure who's in third right now. But if, again, it might be the camera. I don't know if the lead is getting a little closer, depending on the angle yeah. um, you're looking at. I think it's getting closer, I, I think it's getting closer. So she started too fast then. You know, if, if you get a sense of that with 1K to go. Yeah, and you and 
Tom, you put it, you put it out there. She was running 16 minute pace for 5K. Yeah. The course record here is Caitlin Tui, 1637 that she ran in the second of her three consecutive victories. And it's just now a question as she reaches 4K out on the course, can she hold on to the lead, which was 14 and a half seconds at the 3K mark? as we'll await the 4K split coming up here shortly. I think these the two uh, the two hills the last half mile, I think, could play a major difference for momentum here. If you can power up those and get back in your stride quickly, I think you're going to come away with the win. Well, she handles those hairpin turns pretty well, but boy, I mean, I think, is that, there, there's some... <laughs> yeah, I think, that, I think they smell blood, Sean. Yeah, I think they can, I think she knows. Um, I actually saw her training up in St. Moritz this summer when we were preparing for the World Championship. She was out there with her dad, so, I mean, she could cap off an incredible season right now, but she, I mean, she knows right now that the win, the win is there, I think, you know, and she's leading her team. Um, I don't know if we have the 4K splits yet to see where, uh, Nywad and um, Academy are, but this uh, this individual battle is going to be spicy. So we're coming up to 4K now. Yeah, coming up to the 4K now. So we'll see that Leachman's lead is now less than a second and may not be a lead much longer as the sophomore Addie Ritzenheim and Bethany Mahalik still in the mix here as well as the hot pace has started to take its toll on Leachman, still holding on to second, but now here comes Mahalik, and Ritzenheim looking strong in the lead. Uh, she looks composed. I mean, if you look at her face, it does not look like she's straining. Breathing is under control. And what she did is when she caught Leachman, she just kept powering on, did not hesitate at all. And you can tell that, I mean, she's got some great momentum right now, and I think, you know, she's focused, and if she can handle these last two hills, Great, but I wouldn't count out Mahalik yet. The big game hunter keeps staying in the picture here. But it would be really amazing if Addie won as just a sophomore, leading her team to a probable or a possible team victory, considering her pedigree. It's just a remarkable story. And, you know, she wasn't one of the top, very top runners at either regionals or state. But boy, she is really peaking well here. But here comes Mahalik. And she's given no quarter. And Mahalik having a little bit of an advantage here. She almost can kind of watch the uh -huh. line that uh, Ritzenheim is taking. And this is the part of the race where you would expect them to go and try to find as much fresh ground as they can. Uh, yeah. And uh, right now they're both having challenges trying to find any of them. That golf course is destroyed. That's I don't know if there's much press. For, you know, we'll see if we can keep that momentum or if Nawa can answer over this last day. Well, here come the terraces that Rich Gonzalez talked about yeah. in that pre-race report and has been a defining moment on this race for so many years as it's not one that you have to crest, but right after you crest the first, it's on to the second and steeper one. But now, Addie Ritzenheim sees the finish line. Bethany Mahalik now sees the finish line. She's coming. Well, a hot pace from the early going here. A sloppy day in Portland, Oregon in 2023. Patience for our leaders here in the final stages and the most patient of all, the most confident of all, Good is going to celebrate as a Nike Cross She's National amazing. Champion. This she is, is a gamer Ritzenheim. runner. Holy cow. She is so clutch. That was a brilliant race by Addie. Great emotion there. Can't believe that she won. She was 39 in the Mahalik Senior. Giving her loads of encouragement. What great sportsmanship. Well, look at this battle coming down the last stages. As Isabella Lori doing battle there oh. with Wisnowski, leaving it on wow. empty as they get down. At the ground, Forsyth got the effort for her. She will finish in the top five as they get Wisniewski third, Alori fourth, and the eighth grader, Gianna Raymer, finishing in sixth. Yes, and Elizabeth Leachman finishes 15th after going out so hard at the beginning of this race. Ali Zeeland only 13th. So a couple of the big names a little bit further down the leaderboard. 
She and learned. Kind of she learned from experience. But it's going to be answered pretty quick, Tom, because the, all of their runners were in like the top 30 or 40 places. Elizabeth, yes. you ran hard. I've seen a lot of orange coming in right now, and I think both of their keep your head up. Kids were that color. Yes, they were. And the lowest team score to win was back in 2010 with 27 by Manlius. That's not going to be the uh, winning score today, but it'll still be a competitive one. There is real-time adjustments Ooh. of the scoring. Academy with 61, Niwot with 72. Oh, God, so if, if these scores hold, Niwot was able to move up for that last day, but it just wasn't going to be enough. Academy was able to stay strong and I think even improved in maybe two spots, but similar to the boys' race, we would have a double champion, or first and second place from the same state. Well, look at Academy there, all those green arrows showing yeah. up. So four of their five runners doing what you need your team to do up and down the board. Move up in the standings where you can. Hook with really maybe the decisive move in that third position, gaining 12 to offset four of five on the Niwot side, also improving, but all in single digits. So Hook may get the team MVP on the so both teams executed incredibly well over that last day, but Academy was just able to execute a little better. Like you said, the third runner passing 12 Shemora. spots. I mean, we saw that with uh, the women's race. Go be with the team. You guys are in the lead. Go be with them. I think a lot of their, you know, a few of their runners uh, were able to pass a lot of people over that last day. That's the difference between winning and winning national title. But one of the things that really strikes Scotty. me is parentheses, the top 14 Scotty. all from that southwest region. And on the boys' side, the same thing. Just incredible depth in that region. Colorado and Utah just dominating on both the boys' and girls' side this year. Well, I credit the decision makers who are afforded that option, like the football bowl committee, you know, trying to choose those at-large teams of how they think they will perform on this national stage and giving one region two, that's the but at least validated here unofficially with the top four, including those two at all making the top four here in one other note, uh, Sandy Engelhart, one of our big, big stories coming in, she finished 26. It's you know, really a situation where this, this is a hard race. Sadie is amazing. The nature of what mud this can cheese do. up the really best races. Funny. Other thing I wanted to mention, Kinetic right now in six. They're the two times gun champions. They're only ranked 11 coming in. So for them to finish, I think they should be proud. And they have a lot of other classy underclass when they're coming in. So it's a good transition year for them, and they could be at the top in future years. I wonder if there's the boys, you know, it seemed like some of the girls race how they have raced other races this season. They're not very hard, but I think the conditions maybe played a role. And you know, Addy, you know, didn't, didn't go out slow, but kind of did a little more patient and built up through the race. And, you know, she was able to stay strong and clearly keep going. That was from the I mean, you know, you saw Lucia, who went out. You would, you would have thought because of her friends that she would hang on, but Rick's and I didn't get sucked in. She ran her race, had that confidence, that moxie that you talked about, and did a brilliant job in figuring this thing out. Not easy on a day like this. Getting our final athletes to and through the line. They're getting cheered on by their teammates as well. Everybody competing here is a champion. And season for most of them as they wind up the championship run and uh, hopefully they won't pay attention but indoor season has already started this one. <laughs> Just want to warn everybody. But what a performance we saw in the latter stages of this race. We have Addie Ritzenheim, our champion. At the hey, Addie! Hi, I'm here. I'm Sinclair Johnson here with our winner, Addie Ritzenheim. Um, how do the conditions play into your race man set? Um, the conditions are perfect considering like from Colorado we kind of race in like every uh, Is it the boys? The condition possible is just like to keep it up. I guess I really like the luck. I was definitely clear here today and we really had to convince him to win. They're holding their interviews in a different place than previous years, so I can't quite see them from the usual spot. To do this with my team is like really important. 
um, like, I always say that the meal was meant to be good for everybody, and our, I could be happy with my team. Well, congratulations, Addie, and, um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you Gatorade and Nike for making this possible. Generator, there's 
something is having issues and man, it's strange. I know Academy is like crazy. Yeah. I bet they were in the rankings. Well, yeah. Uh, I don't know. 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 He just got a photo of me no, taking dude. a video of him. Paul getting broken. Dude, they hit her so bad. Dude. Yeah, but I hit a car and was full speed on my bike. So, Northwest Region, I think it's going to 
first, second, southwest, first, second, fourth, sixth, and a tenth. We're set now for the top three teams of the girls' championship race. All from the Southwest region. From Colorado, it's Denver. Second place, seventy points. Also from Colorado, Nyla. And your 2023 Nike Cross Nationals World Team Champions out of Colorado, scoring 61 points to win by 11, the Sanders Academy. A triple question. I ran like a mile, a mile back. Go Southwest, dang gum. That is domination. Okay, our third place team you mentioned is Denver. Peyton's what you mean like the first year? So coming in. Well, yeah, obviously. The top last few years is the house from the South West region. Boys and girls. It's surprising that the team in the region is so dominant today. How confident was your team knowing that you guys have a very strong showing all the long in the top of the region? Despite the conditions, what do you think? Just the sound. You can't even hear anything right here. So feedback is our top returning, but now sharing his success on the podium with the team. How do you girls celebrate tonight? Yeah. 
have my team. And the trophy is Nicole Hocker. And the girl who's up and left at the end of the year. Our national champions, most important girl, Academy. This is so much fun. Riley's a heavy? No, no, no. He's crazy. That's cool. I'm very cool. Are you guys going to take a bath in that water over there? What? Carly, you need a coat? So Academy in celebration mode, and they should be as they have won the Nike Cross National Championship. It's been a uh, decidedly New York state of mind for championship uh, trophy presentations over the years. So again, nice to see another you know region getting a, a chance to celebrate, and really the Southwest region celebrating overall as they really had dominant performances on both the boys and the girls side. This is kind of your overall reflections of the day. Well, I think, you know, from both team battles, I think having the experience of facing each other at the regional yeah. um, was a lot of valuable experience once we got to the national meet. From the boys side, we heard, um, you know, that they were second at both the state meet and the regional meet and how they knew that they wanted to approach um, their execution of this race differently. They went to the women's race, academy, just especially over the uh, fourth and fifth K, just really moved up well and were able to stay strong. And like we said, it really came down to the depth because up front, um, you know, there, there wasn't really much Abby and Bethany could do. That was gonna be a one point difference, but it came down to their third, fourth, and fifth runners. And it was a great success today. And, you know, as is often the case, Tom, two distinctly different races unfold on the same race course. The boys, larger pack at the front end, and then Georgia Gordon kind of emerges and wins you know, that championship for Addy. Kind of had to chase some leaders that went out really strongly, Leachman and uh, Forsyth. But what are your thoughts on just the racing and this overall today? Well, I was, um, I was really impressed with all of the teams and the competitors overall. I mean, dealing with these conditions is not easy. And we didn't even talk about the temperature, which was in the mid-40s. That's not exactly comfortable. Oh, it One was wonderful, the, uh, actually. Race, it I mean, felt good. About how important experience was yeah, yeah, it's and it's yet, six to the top ten the race. Yeah. 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 race at the Black Nike north of the finish as you make your way toward the start area. Again, the NXN community race beginning in about nine minutes. Reminder, get your official Nike Cross Nationals merchandise at the retail tent located at the top of the hill near the main entrance. We're going to have an encore presentation of all four episodes of Making Footprints, our story of the Gallup High School cross-country season this year. But one day we had in four... And then get it here. We landed on Lendinger Golf Course, making for some pretty authentic cross-country racing conditions. Congratulations to JoJo Jordan on the boys' side, Addie Ritzenheim on the girls' side as our individual champions, and then Harriman on the boys' side, Academy on the girls' side, taking the Nike Cross National Team title. For Grant Fisher, Sinclair Johnson, Rich Gonzalez, Tom Cure, and Sean McGordy. I'm Paul Swangar. Thanks for joining us for our coverage of the 2023 Nike Cross Nationals Championship. Stay tuned now for episodes one through four of Making Footprints. Well, that's a wrap.
One more, full send, full send. Thank <laughs> you.